That is so, so not cool in Jordan. That is like, is so rude. Marhaban ya jamaat. Listen guys, this introduction might get a little bit long. So if you don't want to hear me make an idiot out of myself, trying to introduce myself in Arabic, then skip ahead about one minute. Okay, yalla. Marhaban, it's me Rachel. Uh, I'm in Britannia. And I'm from the Jordan from the four years ago. I'm a Zoji, who is Jordan. And I have two daughters. One is Hashim, and one is Adham. And I'm channel, the YouTube channel. عشان بدي um, أوف. Google Translate I need you um, okay طب uh, okay بعمل um, YouTube channel عشان بدي uh, تظهر تظهر الكو uh, حياتي في أردن وفي uh, مستقبل إن شاء الله um, يكون ترجمات um, على في ال فيديو <تصفيق> اوكي شكرا لايك uh, وسبسكرايب like شو يعني سبسكرايب الاشتراك لو سمحتوا لايك like والاشتراك الاشتراك يلا اوكي So that was awkward. Okay, moving on. I just wanted to introduce myself to my new followers because alhamdulillah, I've had a big growth in um, my subs on YouTube and I haven't introduced myself for a while. So there you go. Um, and I will put the translations because I'm sure that none of that made sense. Okay guys, if you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, I recently created a new Facebook account. You can find all the details here. Um, then you will know that I was a bit confused this week about what I wanted to record a video on. I had four options of things that I had been waiting to put out and I just couldn't choose between them. And I put it out to the people of Instagram and Facebook and you guys voted um, mostly like, it was like 50-50 between this one, cultural no-nos and outlet shopping. So I might actually put that one out on a Thursday or Friday because I do sometimes put another video out, not just on a Tuesday forgot to mention that in my introduction. So I was thinking about what to call this video and I see that there's a bit of a trend at the minute to call, like to do a video on like how to annoy the British or how to annoy um, Americans. And I just felt like that would be so misleading because it's actually really hard to annoy a Jordanian, especially if you're foreign. And a lot of these things that I'm gonna talk about, I've been doing them up until very, very recently, or I still am in the bad habit of doing them, even though I know that among Jordanians or among Arabs, it's not socially acceptable. People haven't necessarily, they haven't come forward and told me in the last four years that I've been here that this isn't appropriate or this isn't right, really acceptable because they've been giving me the benefit of the doubt. They've been treating me, you know, as, as, as a welcome foreigner and that they are very forgiving and all of these things. Um, so really this list is, is more about like how to be the best Um, foreigner or the best guest that you can be um, but it's not necessarily like doesn't mean that if you do any of these things people are going to get upset with you um, because they're just not like that in England it's very easy to upset people even if you're foreign they don't care in fact if you're foreign it's, it's, it's much 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 easier to annoy British people they're such we are such cold people and we do we get irritated by things and we take it on such a personal level We're like really very sensitive. And Jordanians aren't sensitive in the same way. And I kept thinking about this. Does this mean like, am I implying that Jordanians are like crude or crass in some way or coarse? But no, they're not. Actually, they're emotionally intelligent. Um, it's just that they're not as sensitive. And I think it's because the society is so rooted around, um, you know, community aspect and family aspect. And people spend so much time with each other and so much time Um, in each other's personal spaces because there's not this I idea so much of you know individualism so things are much more accepted and things are much more easier <laughs> much more easier um, even though you have got this stereotype that in the Arab world is very judgmental and all of these things there is that um, but as well people aren't they're just not as sensitive 
So yeah, this video is basically how to be a better guest in Jordan. The first one is knowing when to leave a room. We have different relationship between men and women in this country. And that means that sometimes it's not appropriate for a certain gender to hang around in the room while um, another gender is there. So if you've got a big group of men, it's not always appropriate for the woman to stay in the room the whole time or for the whole visit with those men. Exactly the same situation for the other way around. If there is a big group of women, it's not always appropriate for a man to hang around. So say your husband is having his friend over or his multiple, lots of friends over, then maybe you will greet them at the door, but you don't sit there with them for the entire visit. You leave the room and you might say goodbye at the end. Or you might not say hello and goodbye at all. You just like prepare their coffee and things in the other room. And the same goes if it's the other way around, you know, if you've got all your girlfriends around or something like that, then not always should your husband be hanging around with you. It, it just depends on the situation. And it doesn't always, it doesn't always apply. So um, it's just knowing when it's an inappropriate or when it's appropriate. And I find that very difficult to kind of assess. Um, and sometimes it's just worth asking I think if you're with your husband and you're not sure if it's time for you to go maybe you should have some kind of cue the next one I don't know if this is like a universal thing or if this is just some people that I know um, is you don't touch somebody on the back of the neck or on, on their shoulder or this kind of area um, because it can seem um, like a hostile gesture so maybe it's something that you do if you're looking for a fight I'm not really sure um, maybe you guys can clarify that for me, um, if that's a universal thing or not. This one is the biggest one. This is the one that I actually am building my entire video around. Don't walk in front of somebody while they are praying. Um, and I didn't know this until a year ago. And I have been walking in front of people praying for the last, well, I had been for the last three years that I had been here. And nobody had ever said to me that that's not okay because I'm a foreigner, because they're being forgiving and friendly and all the rest of it. Um, but you know, it got to a point probably where it was like, okay, you're not a foreigner anymore, you live here, stop walking in front of us. <laughs> so what you can do if someone's praying in your way, which they often do, um, you can grab a cushion and you can put it in front of them and then you can walk past. Um, I've heard two different reasons for this. I've heard one, that when you're praying, you're closest to God. So if you're standing in front of somebody and they are subdued, I think it's called, when they're um, like they're down on the ground, then you're like standing between them and God. Um, and also similar to that, somebody said that it looks like they are worshiping you. So it's like putting yourself as, you know, I d I'm not quite sure. Maybe you can explain that to me in the comments as well. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's, a, that's a really good one, a good solid one to know. Don't walk directly in front of someone while they are praying. Another one, I may have mentioned this before, it goes along with that theme of gender and things. Don't assume that somebody wants to shake your hand or kiss you on the cheek. So um, some men will not shake hands and some women will not shake hands. So um, don't be embarrassed if someone refuses to shake your hand, but don't always just assume don't lean in for a kiss immediately with someone of the opposite sex that you don't know very well because you, you don't know how they're going to react to that. Another one with making assumptions is don't assume that everybody is Muslim. I think this is a really easy thing for foreigners to do because we just see the Middle East and we think of Islam, but not everybody here is Muslim. So and when you say assalamu alaikum, this is a specifically Muslim greeting um, and it's not used by Christians. So it's a much more kind of um, friendly, welcoming thing if you just say marhaban. It's used by everybody um, and it doesn't have any kind of religious connotation. And don't be offended if somebody, if you say salam alaikum and they don't reply with wa alaikum as salam, then um, it's for a reason and it's cool. Like, let, it, let, it, let it go, it doesn't matter. Don't be embarrassed. Um, but just keep in mind for, for the next time, maybe just keep with marhaba unless it's very obvious that that person is Muslim. Stick to your side of the hummus and don't mix with other <laughs> meze. This one's really good. Foreigners tend to go in all like with both hands, really enthusiastically eating their breakfasts. 
um, and mixing up all the fool with the hummus and with the um, tebbel and everything and um, dipping, double dipping and putting their falafel everywhere. Um, you stick to your portion of the hummus, even if you're all sharing it, um, and you don't like mix the food together because it's gross. The rudest thing that you can do, and okay, I think there are ruder things that you can do, but okay, something that is quite rude is to seem ungenerous. And in England, we are the masters of seeming un or being ungenerous. Oh, bunny. This is like a common theme in my videos that this bunny wakes up halfway through. So in England, you pay your own way for everything. If you are going out for a meal, you pay, you go Dutch, which means that every person pays their percentage of the meal and it's split evenly. Um, you can't, if you borrow money from someone, even if it's a couple of quid, like even if it's a couple of dinars, they're probably gonna come back at you and say, where is my money? Um, and it's like really bad manners if you don't, if you're not the one to initiate giving back the money. Um, and even like, if you go, <laughs> if you go in a, in a car with somebody, they expect you to pay your portion of the petrol, for instance, if it's a road trip or they're giving you a lift to work or something like that. That is so, so not cool in Jordan. That is like, it's so rude. It's unbelievably rude here to do something like that. Um, once when I was at school, I had borrowed a jumper off somebody and I hadn't given it back within a suitable, a reasonable time and I was wearing it and she saw it and she said to me in front of everybody, that's my jumper, I want it back now. And she meant now. So I literally, she made me take off the jumper in front of everybody. I was a teenager, that was so embarrassing. She made me take off the jumper in front of everyone and give it back to her. That's the level that we're at in England. In Jordan, someone will take the clothes off their back and give it to you if you compliment it, if they think that you like it. It's totally opposite. Keep that in mind when you're doing social activities with Jordanians or with Arabs, um, because they're not gonna understand that concept of like individualism to that, like, that level. So that's my video for today. If there's anything that you wanna add or that you don't agree with, then as always, please tell me in the comments below. <laughs> Um, and we'll have a chat about it. If you haven't found me on Facebook or Instagram, then please do. All the details are there. Um, and we can have a chat on there as well if you prefer. Um, and inshallah, because you guys voted for it, I'll put out the shopping haul, the outlet shopping haul on Thursday or Friday. And if you haven't subscribed, guys, 70% of you haven't subscribed, <laughs> please subscribe now. It would make my day. Okay. Masalam. Bye. Yes. You stay subscribed for mommy.